boundary condition for oblique incidence. Here, in this figure, we have considered this is uh, medium 1 and this is medium 2 and this is the boundary and a wave is propagating along the z direction and this is x then the boundary condition for this figure we can write epsilon 1 e1 perpendicular which is equal to e2 epsilon 2 e2 perpendicular and where e1 here we have the electric the incident component the reflected component and here we must have the transmitted component and similarly for the magnetic field b1 perpendicular which is equal to b2 perpendicular this must be equal to b naught i plus b naught this which is equal to b naught t and this must be polarized in the z direction this is the z direction this is z and all will be polarized in the uh, z direction all will be propagating in the here the light is the wave is propagating in the z direction so this is z z z and z <coughs> in another case f is theta i and reflected theta r and this is the transmitted angle theta t then for this for this figure we must have the electric and magnetic component here the electric and magnetic component here also the electric and magnetic component then e1 parallel must be equal to e2 parallel and in e1 parallel we have e naught i and e naught r and this must be have in the x y plane and e naught t this also be in the x y plane because the wave is propagating in which makes an angle theta with the z axis <coughs> Similarly, for the magnetic field 1 over v1, v1 parallel, which is equal to 1 over v2, v2 parallel, and this is also equal to v naught i plus v naught r xy, which is equal to 1 over mu 2. This is mu 2 and v naught xy. Here, the polarization of incident wave, suppose it is parallel to the plane of incident xz plane we have considered the xz plane so this will be the uh, boundary condition for this figure further for simplicity we only consider the electric field component and ignore the magnetic field component so in this diagram we have only the electric field ei er and et and for simplicity forget about the uh, magnetic field so this is an incident ray this is the incident wave this is the reflected one this is the transmitted one this makes an equal theta i this theta r this is theta T. This is the z-axis and this is the x-axis. Now, if we have this EI, this is ER and this is ET, split this EI, ER and ET into its rectangular components. So, here you can see this component this is the horizontal component and this is the vertical component because theta is with this so this component is equal to minus e naught i sine theta i here this incident angle is equal to this incident angle and this theta r which is equal to this theta r and this theta t which is equal to this theta t so we have this component e naught i cosine theta i also divide this er into its rectangular component so we have 
this component, this one and this one, this component as E naught R cosine theta R and this component is along the Z axis and this is E naught R sine theta R. And similarly we have two components here E T this is the E naught component uh, E naught cosine theta T <coughs> and this component is along the negative z direction so this is minus e naught t sine theta t <coughs> now using this these uh, boundary conditions and from this boundary condition we can say that e1 e1 perpendicular so here epsilon 1 and E1 perpendicular, we have uh, two components. One is this one minus E naught minus E naught I sine theta I. This one plus the other one as the uh, reflected one, and here the reflected one is this. So this is E naught R and sine theta R. This is equal to E2 uh, epsilon 2 and E2 perpendicular and E2 perpendicular we have this one, this component which is along in the negative direction. So this is minus E naught T sine theta t from third boundary condition where e naught i cosine theta i this this component this component uh, e naught this one plus this component e naught r cosine theta r which is equal to this one e naught t cosine theta t <coughs> and from the fourth boundary condition from the fourth boundary condition I will write down from fourth boundary condition one word me one B naught I B naught R X Y we already mentioned in the previous slide mu2 b naught t and x y so the relation between b and e is 1 over v e naught so 1 over mu1 b naught i v may represent this e naught i divided by v1 minus this is a reflected one then e naught r divided by v1 which is equal to 1 over mu 2 and e naught t divided by v2 after some uh, <coughs> mathematical steps we can write this equation as 1 word if, if I take common from this 1 word v, v1 common from this mu1 v1 and this is equal to e naught i minus e naught r 
which is equal to 1 over mu 2 v2 and e naught t now multiply this this term to the other side so e naught i minus e naught r which is equal to mu 1 v1 divided by mu 2 v2 and e naught t <coughs> and let's call this term beta this term is beta so e naught i minus e naught r which is equal to beta e naught t and let's say this equation as equation number one here this is equation number one beta which is equal to mu 1 v1 divided by also if we uh, consider this in the refractive index then this is mu 1 and 2 and mu 2 and 1 from the third boundary condition as we mentioned earlier and where e naught i <coughs> cosine theta i in the previous slide I have mentioned this point and theta r which is equal to e naught t cosine theta t we know that from the first second law that the angle of incidence which is equal to the angle of reflection so this angle and this angle are equal if these are equal then we can say that cosine theta i e naught i plus e naught r which is equal to e naught t cosine theta t and divide this equation <coughs> by uh, cosine theta i then e naught i plus e naught r which is equal to e naught t cosine theta t divided by cosine theta i and let call this term which is alpha then e naught i plus e naught r which is equal to alpha e naught t and this is equation number two so we have now two equations one and two and we can find out e naught t and e naught r from these two equations from equation one and from equation two we can find out e naught r and e naught at equation one and equation two if we add these two equations we can get two e naught i which is equal to alpha plus beta e naught t and from this we can get e naught t which is equal to 2 
divided by alpha plus beta and e naught i. So this is one thing that we have calculated. Also, uh, putting the value of e naught t in this equation, r in this equation, we can get e naught r, which is E naught R, which is equal to alpha minus beta, alpha plus beta, E naught I. So this equation 3 and we have this equation as equation number 4. <clears throat> These equation 3 and 4 are called these two equations. This one and this one. These two equation, equation equation three and four are called Fresnel equation. 